Good morning, everyone. It's wonderful to see you today on this first Sunday of Advent. Can you believe it? It's here. Let's go ahead and greet our neighbors. Good morning. Welcome to Community Christian Church. All of God's children are welcome here. Young or old, members of this church or no church, those who believe and those who are still searching. All races, cultures, orientations and expressions are loved by God. Come as you are. Let's celebrate God's love, peace and justice together. Our guest accompanist again today is Mr. Stephen Popo. We're happy to have him. Let's prepare our hearts and minds to worship. Thank you, Steve. You're invited to stand and join us in singing hymn number 125, Come, O Long Expected Jesus.
may be seated. At this time, we welcome the Gallucci family up to light the first candle on our Advent wreath. When I look around, I see shadows of hunger. So many neighbors nearby and around the world will go to bed hungry tonight. When I look around, I see shadows of injustice, the rich getting richer and the poor getting poorer, and someone somewhere will fall asleep under a bridge tonight. In the face. In the face of hunger, we light a candle of hope. In the face of injustice, in the face of despair, we light a candle of hope. May the light from this candle be overwhelm the world. May the light from this candle say to all that God's hope is coming on earth as it already is in heaven. Friends, be not afraid. God is, God's hope is at hand. Would you join me in standing once again? We will sing hymn number 128, the first verse of One Candle is Lit. be seated. This morning we have some special music. We invite Andrew Lamb up to play the piano. You may have seen Andrew play before. He is a member of our bell choir, one of our beloved dinglings, and we look forward to hearing him today. I believe he is playing a piece by Mozart, if that is correct. Yes, I'm getting a nod.
you, Andrew. Good morning. At this time, I would like to invite all of our children to come join me up on the steps, please. Good morning. How is everybody? Good? Did you have a good Thanksgiving? Yeah? Good. You played a lot of video games? <laughs> good. So I have a question for you. What's happening in a little less than a month from now? Christmas. Christmas. What's our favorite part about Christmas? The boys. <laughs> the presents. The presents. I uh, uh, talking about how Jesus was born. Talking about how Jesus was born. Any other part, favorite parts of Christmas? Decorating the tr Christmas tree. Decorating the Christmas tree. Stockings. <laughs> the stockings. Okay. So then let me ask you this. Uh, probably starting some places, starting now, maybe in another week or so, what are we going to do? What's going to happen before Christmas starts? Like, what do we do to get ready for Christmas? Uh, shovel out the driveway from snow. <laughs> shovel out the driveway from snow sometimes. What else do we do? Like, what do we do outside? Uh, make snow angels. Make snow angels? Make snowman. Make a snowman, okay. Maybe if there's not snow on the ground, what do we do? You drive around. Put up decorations on your house. Put up decorations on our house. What do we do inside to get ready for Christmas? Put up, Put up Christmas tree. Yeah, that's your favorite part, right? Yeah. Maybe what's something else that we do? Um, maybe while we're, we're riding in the car, what, what do we do? Is there anything special that we listen to? Listen to Christmas music. Listen to Christmas music. Yeah, we all listen to Christmas music, right? These are all things that we do to prepare for Christmas, right? Okay, so today, uh, Reverend Sarah is going to talk about Jesus uh, is preparing his disciples for the good news that he brings. Do we know what, did we hear what they said today is the first day of in the church? First day the Advent candle. The first day of, it's the first Sunday of Advent, right? So Advent was where Jesus was preparing all of his disciples for the good news that he's going to bring, right? At Christmas, he brings gonna, good news. He's going to light the other candle. I don't know. We'll have to wait and see. <laughs> yes, there it is on the calendar, but Advent is the beginning of our Christmas season, right? Where Jesus is going to bring us the good news. So that is our good news for today. Can you all repeat this prayer for me? Dear God, Dear God, thank you for Jesus. Thank you for Jesus. Who teaches us? To stay awake. To stay awake. To your better way. To your better way. Amen. Amen. All right, you guys can head to Children's Church. Thank you. Jesus loves the little children. Good morning. I'm glad we're worshiping together. This is the time that we pray for one another. We're going to take a few requests, but also if you have a request that you don't get a chance to say, we have baskets in the back. Our prayer team meets on Tuesday mornings, and we would love to pray for you. What do you want to lift up this morning? We're going to pray for Jen's friend, Christina, with a lot of health issues. Let us pray. God, we lift up Christina, who is experiencing seizures and unknown health issues. We pray for the doctors who tend to her and for answers and healing. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. What else? Eva. Let's pray for Judy and Jean. We're so glad that you're here. And Jean, we've been praying for your health. Let us pray. God, we lift up Judy and Jean who are in worship. We have been praying for them, for their well-being, for their healing, and for Jean's journey through cancer. We pray a blessing on their presence here. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. 
Let's pray now for the unspoken prayer requests in our lives and in our world. And if you have a request that wasn't said, please add it to our prayer basket. Loving and faithful God, this is a time of waiting and wondering and expecting. This is a time where we have new eyes to see the world. Where might you be showing up? Where might you be transforming us? Where might your hope be born? In this Advent season, when we come to worship and wait and wonder and expect you to show up, help us to be faithful in all that you've called us to do, all that you've called us to proclaim, in all of the ways that we are shining your light in the world. For the unspoken prayer requests that we carry in our hearts, we lift them up to you. For those who are searching, longing, worried, or waiting, we lift them up to you. Be a peace that passes all understanding in this season of Advent as we count down and remember when you came into the world and overwhelmed it with love. We pray this in the name of Christ. Amen.
The scripture reading for the first Sunday in Advent comes from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 24, verses 36 through 44. But about that day and hour no one knows, neither the angels of heaven nor the Son, but only the Father. For as the days of Noah were, so will be the coming of the Son of Man. For as in those days before the flood they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage, until the day Noah entered the ark. And they knew nothing until the flood came and swept them all away, so too will be the coming of the Son of Man. Then two will be in the field, one will be taken and one will be left. Two women will be grinding meal together, one will be taken and one will be left. Keep awake, therefore, for you do not know on what day your Lord is coming. But understand this, if the owner of the house had known in what part of the night the thief was coming, he would have stayed awake and would not have left his house be broken into. Therefore, you also must be ready, for the Son of Man is coming at an unexpected hour. May God add his blessing to the reading of his word. Will you join me in the spirit of prayer? God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable to you, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Hear with me now the words from Michael Wilson, written in the New York Times. A janitor working his shift at a Virginia Walmart a 40-year-old woman returning home to Colorado Springs for the holidays. A young man at his girlfriend's side watching her friend perform in a drag show. Three college football players. A mother who worked to help foster children. One bartender who remembered your drink and another who danced. White and black, gay and straight, old and young, the collection of the newly dead from just three of this month's mass shootings are the very picture of the ideals, inclusivity, setting aside differences that America prides itself on this time each November. Fourteen people who did not know their last Thanksgiving was already behind them. Yesterday's parents, children, and friends became Thursday's empty chairs. All three shootings were carried out at places that, for those within, felt warmly familiar and safe. This is the first Sunday of Advent, and our tree is up, and maybe in your house, your tree is up. Maybe you were listening to things like Silent Night and Angels Sweetly Singing or The Plains. Maybe you came today and what you wanted to hear about was that sweet little baby born. The mother and the father staring into his eyes, people bringing presents to him and bowing to him and a world that would be changed and transformed for the good. Maybe you're coming with bellies full from a meal where everyone around the table gave thanks for what was. Maybe you're coming ready for all the sentimentality and goodness and hope of Advent. And then we start another year in church and the scripture for the first Sunday of Advent as assigned by the lectionary is this doom and gloom scripture from the Gospel of Matthew. It's not about baby Jesus at all. It's not a reading from those early days about the shepherds and the wise men and the manger and no room at the inn. Instead, it's this scripture about a time when people were just eating and drinking and marrying one another and all of a sudden floods came. It's about a time when everyone was just living their life expecting each day to be like the last and then catastrophic things started happening, and it was only then that they realized God was coming back. We hear this scripture, and the first instinct that we have is to say, oh, when is God coming back? This is talking about the second coming. Is it now? Can it be right now? 
to do this, to analyze this scripture this way, to dissect it, to try to pinpoint exactly when God will come back is to totally misunderstand the scripture. If you were listening at the very beginning, it said, nobody knows, not even the angels, not even the son of man can tell you when God comes again. And that is disappointing, isn't it? We come on Sunday to hear promises of truth and of goodness, that God will be here, that the old order of things will pass away, that everything that is dark and everything that is in tombs will be resurrected. We come to hear about the little Jesus in the manger to sentimentally sing around our own Christmas tree, to hug one another and celebrate together and remember what we're thankful for. It's so inconvenient to come on the first Sunday of Advent and hear this kind of scripture, and then to be told, even though we don't know the day or the hour, you can't even predict it because not even the angels know. This might be the point in which you ask us, why did we pick this theme for Advent? Angels we have heard. If we're listening to these angels, shouldn't we be hearing from them when God will come again, when hope will be born again? This is the first Sunday of Advent, and it does not start us at the manger. This is the first Sunday of Advent where the angels are hung and the Christmas tree is up, and all of us would really, really love to sing about Silent Night and angels we have heard singing sweetly on the plains, to forget all that's hard in the world and instead to celebrate through an easy season. But just as the scriptures say, even when God's people were eating and drinking and getting married, they didn't see it coming. (laughs) When young people were dancing in the club, they didn't see it coming. When the football team was sitting on their bus, they didn't see it coming. When there were Walmart staff gathering in the break room, they didn't see it coming. The world is a broken place. There are hard things here. Jesus never, ever said it wasn't. When Jesus did come and prepare his disciples for what was ahead, when we come to this scripture, which is at the end of Matthew, where all of his disciples know what he's headed towards, which is Jerusalem, which is death, he was honest with them there. Just like God is honest with God's people today. The world has never been a place of just silent nights and angels singing sweetly. Instead, it's a place where hard things happen. They happen the week of Thanksgiving. We're not safe then. They happen at dance clubs or on buses or in break rooms. The world is a hard place. But it is in the midst of this hardness that God came into the world. It's in the midst of all that is painful, difficult diagnoses, unexpected falls, hard things that everyone around us is experiencing. It's in the middle of all of that that Emmanuel, God with us, starts to show up. So as we begin Advent and the theme is angels we have heard, when we read scriptures like this, we remember that the angels we're looking for are us. It's the people here who are called to never forget that even in a world where a break room or a bus or a dance club become dangerous, that we will still bravely and boldly light a tiny little candle and say together, God's hope is at hand. That even when unexpected health crises emerge, even when estrangements continue, even when we feel broken or anxious, even then, we will still show up and boldly light a candle and remember that when a tiny little light shines in the darkness, the darkness will never overcome it. When the scripture asks us to be aware because we don't know the day or the hour, to be aware, what are we to be aware of? We are to be aware of God's presence, not just coming once in a manger or once at the end of time, but God showing up again and again and again, believing that to light a candle of hope on Sunday 
is to see God. To sing Emmanuel with a group of people, even when the world is dangerous, is to see God. To pray for the people we know and love who are going through hard things. To decide that it's still worth it to pray even when the whole world seems hard. That is to see God and to trust God and to prepare that God is here. So as we enter this Advent season with wreaths and trees and greens and songs, nothing about what we do here on Sunday will erase what is painful in the world. Just like Jesus never lied to his disciples and said, follow me and it will be easy. Just as the angels never said, find the baby in the manger and all will be well. God says a different thing. And as God's people were supposed to hear this different thing and share this different thing as angels to one another, that in the midst of what's hard, in the midst of what's broken, in the midst of what's painful, in this very difficult world still, we will light a candle of hope and believe God's hope is at hand. We will gather in one place like this church and call it holy and call it good and keep walking each other through it because that is what Emmanuel is about. God is with us right now. Amen. Help us to give you not only our finances, but all we are, all we have, and all we hold. We open our lives to you for the service of your kingdom. Please work through our offering today, our lives this coming week, and lead us us to follow Christ in all that we do and say. Deacons. <laughs> this Advent season we wait in hope and we give in hope hope for your coming reign hope because of your presence with us even now receive these generous offerings and use them for your work of healing and hope in our world amen
similar to the tiny candle of hope that we boldly light. This table with a tiny wafer and a sip from the cup is also a gesture of extravagant faith. That even in a world that has so many hard things and heartaches and impossible situations, we still believe that something holy and sacred and good and transformational happens when we as a group of people say we will come to this table together. We will meet God together here at this table. And unlike a world that would love to break us and divide us, it's at this table we remember all are welcome. You're welcome whether you believe a little or a lot, whether you've been baptized or not, whether you're a member of this church or no church. You're welcome at this table because it's God's table for all. Elders, let us pray. Gracious God, pour out your Holy Spirit upon us and upon these, your gifts of bread and wine, that the bread we break and the cup we bless may be the communion of the body and blood of Christ. By your Spirit, unite us with Christ and with your church in all the world. Amen. As we drink from this cup, God, give us true faith and make that faith grow in us day by day. Also give us hope and love so that we may serve our neighbors according to your will. Through our Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We remember on the night that Jesus was betrayed, he gathered with his disciples in an upper room. He took a loaf of bread and blessed it and then broke it for all things that are broken. And Jesus said, take, eat, all of you. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And in the same way, after the supper, Jesus took the cup and gave thanks for it and blessed it and then gave it to his disciples and said, drink deeply from this cup, all of you. In it is a new covenant in my blood for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Every time that we eat this bread and we drink from this cup, we proclaim that Christ lives among us until God comes again. Will you join me praying the prayer that Jesus taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from Would you stand, please, and join me in singing hymn number 134, Emmanuel, Emmanuel. We will sing through it twice.
and now may the God who created you in the image of goodness, the Holy Spirit who breathed into you the breath of life, and Christ who went ahead of us all, teaching us how to speak like angels and whisper hope into the world, send you into this day with peace. Amen. <laughs>